Hello, welcome to Chautauqua Art Gallery in Lakewood, New York. My name is Leslie, I own and manage the gallery, and today I want to talk a little bit about framing. I work with a lot of different artists and many of them end up with the same questions about presenting their artwork in a professional manner, either with or without a frame, uh, in a economical way. So I want to do a couple short videos to give you some tips and tricks I've learned in my art career from professional framers and other artists. Um, and talk about some low cost tools you can purchase that will give you the ability to professionally display your artwork if you um, decide custom framing is not for you. So in this first video, we are going to work on two canvas pieces, and I'm going to do a second video to follow up that will um, be a frame with glass in front of it and a, a paper piece. Um, before we get started, when is a situation where you do not need a frame? Because there are situations where you may not necessarily need a frame, but you still need to properly display your artwork. Here's, um, I'm gonna show you an example of a painting that does not need a frame. This is a floral work by Carrie Trado, a local Westfield artist. This is a work on canvas, mixed media, I think. Um, it's a gallery wrapped canvas, which means it's got this thicker dimension to it and the canvas is wrapped all the way around to the back. Um, you can see that Carrie's painted the edges of this. So this is a finished look and does not need to have a frame on it. This depth also gives it a nicer feel when it's hanging on the wall. Uh, Carrie has also gone to the trouble of putting paper on the back. So it kind of covers up and cleans up the frame from the canvas and she's put these nice uh, wire hangers on there. So this is ready to go on the wall with a nice look without a frame. The next piece is the one I'm going to work on today. This is another piece of Carrie's. It's a smaller floral, also mixed media. Uh, it's a thinner canvas and she has also gone through and painted and cleaned up the edges so it looks nice. And she's papered the back. Um, we could also just put screw eyes in here and add a wire to hang it up, but I want to also show you how we can elevate the look of this little guy by adding a simple black frame to it. And then last today, we are going to work on a floating frame for this beautiful canvas collage by local artist Sarah Mahalik. All right. Before I start framing Carrie's piece, I'm going to go over the supplies I'm going to be using to do the framing. Uh, starting out with this frame I ordered online, I think this came from Utrecht Art Supplies. Um, I'll post a link to different discount art supply stores that I've used. I also like to check Hyatt's in Buffalo since it's our local supply store and sometimes I can get some good deals there too. Anyways, this is an online frame. It's a black wooden frame. I wanted an 11 by 14 size. I also checked the depth when I ordered it. The space here, uh, the depth of the frame, sometimes you'll see it listed as the rabbit, will tell you how deep the frame is and how well your painting will sit inside of it. So this canvas is probably about seven eighths of an inch. So I wanted the depth of the frame to be about that size. So the painting doesn't sink in too far or stick out too far from the frame when I put it in there. You can see it's just got a little bit of a lip here and then it'll be perfect for adding clips on to it to attach it to the frame. When you get a frame in the mail, wipe it off. Sometimes they're dusty, a little dirty. Inspect it and make sure there's no scratches or dings or dents in it. Make sure that the corners are all sealed and the uh, joints line up properly. If there's something wrong with it, you really want to just send it back and ask for a new one. Um, it'll just make your work look subpar if you have something that's dinged or scratched or the corners popped open. And we really want to convey a high quality professional look when we're putting our frames on. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for a moment. I'm going to show you the tools I'll be using. First, I have a framing awl, AWL. You can see it's got this nice sharp point on the end. And then I'm going to use some frame sealing tape. This isn't necessary for all of the frames that you'll be doing, uh, but if you're using an unfinished wood frame, which we are in the back, we are going to want to seal it with some tape 
to keep the acids from that wood from coming on and staining or eroding the canvas as it sits next to it over time. Um, again, not, not necessary, but something I'm going to use for this unfinished wood frame. Next, I have frame clips. I've got a couple different sizes here. And these are what I'm going to use to attach the frame to the uh, canvas. And then I have my wire. Uh, wire comes in different sizes and gauges. You can see listed on most packages, it'll tell you how many pounds it's for. So this is for, this will hang a 20 pound pitcher weight, which is plenty for what we're doing today. You can get it in bulk like this online, or you can get smaller amounts of it. You can see this was originally nine feet. Uh, you can pick up these at the hardware store or your craft store. There are different ways you can attach the wire to your frame. You can use framing, little framing hooks like this. If you want, for these smaller frames, I find it economical to use um, small screw eyes that I can buy at the hardware store. Uh, they last a long time and they are a lower cost. And as far as pricing goes, I think I spent, uh, I looked this up on Amazon, my framing all is about $10, $11. My assorted package of clips was $11. And then you're looking at another 10 to $15 for the, for the wire and the, the screw eyes possibly. So maybe up to, um, depending on what you purchase, 25 to $50 worth of supplies that you'll continue to use um, every time that you do your frames. And they do last quite a long time. Oh, one last thing that you'll need is a pair of wire cutters here. And these guys you can get in um, the garden section of a craft store or even the dollar store and you just need a little pair to snip off the wire when you're um, putting it on the frame. So I'll clear these out of the way and we'll get started putting the framing tape on the frame. So this is an aluminum framing tape. Um, that aluminum is going to block out acids that could leach from this unfinished wood onto my canvas. Again, not a requirement, but something that's a good idea if you're using an unfinished wood frame. And because it's aluminum, it has a bend to it. It's sometimes easier to work with smaller pieces, especially when you're getting started. So I'm going to trim a piece off. And before I peel the, the tape off the back, I'm going to just uh, test it out on where I want it to, uh, to be on my frame because it's a little bit difficult to reposition once you get it down there. So there is the sticky side. I also don't want this to be visible from the front of the frame. So I want, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pre-work it in there to make sure that it stays below, just below the edge of that frame. There. Okay, I've kind of got it worked into the shape of my frame so now I can peel the sticky backing off and place it on the frame. There we go. Okay. I'm going to be really careful to try to get this on there right the first time. I'm going to start by the edge of the frame because I do not want it to go over the edge. I'm going to put it just underneath the edge. There. There we go. Now I want to double check before I put any more on there just to make sure I can't see that from the front. So I'll put my painting back on. And check. And Perfect. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish 
putting that tape around the edge. Okay, the tape is on the back of the frame. It's time to put the painting in. I'm going to do that face down. And then I'm going to flip this over and see how it looks because I want to make sure that I don't see any gaps near the top or the sides. So I want to get a good feel for how I need to have this adjusted in the frame to make sure that we don't see any air back there. Okay, it looks good right about there. I'm going to keep that in mind as I continue to frame it. I'm going to flip it back over. And now I need to get my clips out and see which size I have here is going to work best for this painting. And I have a feeling these quarter inch or if Maybe I'll try the three eighths of an inch will work. And what I'm doing is just making sure that the depth um, fits in, fits the painting in nice and snug. So this one is, there's a little room here, a little space, and I don't want that. So I'm going to try the slightly smaller hook or slightly smaller clip. quarter inch. There. That works nicely. There's not really a gap or very much of a gap between the hook and the canvas and it fits snugly there on the frame. So I'm going to use these quarter inch clips. Okay, I'm going to put one clip on the top and bottom of this painting and then two on each side. Uh, if it were a bigger painting, I would use more clips, but for the small size, I think this will be more than enough. I have screws that came with the clips. So for my first one, I'm going to take my framing all and I'm going to use it to punch a hole to, to screw my clips in. Oh, important to note on these clips, one side is a little bit longer than the other one. You want the longer side on the bottom to go on the frame. So this one is, this one, this clip is upside down. I want it to go right side up so the longer part goes on the frame. The reason being, if you're, especially if you're using a narrower frame, this is going to push that screw hole away from the edge and center it on the frame more, and you're going to have less problems with your wood splitting that way. So if you have it upside down and backwards, you can see where the screw hole almost goes over the edge of the frame. And we don't want to do that. We want it to be solidly inside the frame. So make sure that the long end of your clip is down on the frame. Next, I'm going to center this. I'm going to take my framing all, put it in the middle. And I'm just going to hold it in one hand and press down with my palm. Oh, I should have mentioned probably when we first started that you need to make sure your work is on a clean, smooth, flat surface when you're doing this, otherwise you will damage your frame. So all in the screw hole, three or four nice pounds with my hand and pull that out. I've got a nice hole started for my screw and I am going to screw in to the frame before I put a hole in for my canvas because I don't want to uh, to slip or have it move slightly and then have that hole be in the wrong spot. I also forgot to mention that you will need a screwdriver when I was listing the materials, but I trust that most of you should have a screwdriver somewhere around already. So I'm just gonna tighten that down snugly. And then now that that's in there and that's nice and snug, I'm going to punch another hole for my canvas. And again, just want to screw that in so it's firm. You don't need to push it down as hard as you can. All right, now that that first one is in, 
I'm going to set these other clips aside and I'm going to flip my painting back over and just make sure it is still sitting where I want it to in the center of that frame. Uh, and I'll make adjustments if it's not. Uh, let me see. You can't see this as well when I have the camera angle, but it looks like it is still centered. You want to flip your painting over often when you're putting the screw eyes in and making those adjustments just to check and make sure it's all right. It's really an awful feeling to get completely done framing something and flip it over and realize that you've done something incorrect and you need to take, to take it all out and redo it. So please flip your painting over and check it frequently as you're going about this process just to make sure everything's in the right place. So now that that looks okay, I'm gonna go turn it around and do the, the top end. Long side on the frame. I'm gonna eyeball that and make sure it's pretty much in the center. And same thing. If you uh, hear or feel your wood start to split at all, Stop what you're doing, take your screw out, and you might have to make adjustments like uh, moving your clip down and putting two clips on the corners if you've got a split or a problem. And just the next time you do it, try to be a little bit more careful and gentle when you're screwing your screw in. Make sure it's set far enough away from the wood. All right, this screw isn't going in as easily for me, so I'm gonna back it out and make my hole a little bit bigger with my awl. You don't wanna press down too hard with your screwdriver because you'll risk damaging or cracking your frame in the front of it if you do that. So just go back in with your awl if you're having trouble screwing this in. You should be able to just press down a little bit with your screwdriver with just a little bit of pressure to get that screw in. If you happen to be working with a really hard variety of wood, um, you may find that you have to uh, use a hand drill to slightly pre-drill your holes, but in almost all situations, your all should work just fine after a couple tries. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the uh, clips in on each of the sides, and then we'll put the wire on. All right, my screws are in, and I am ready to put the wire on my frame. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to clean up the edges with some framing tape, which is not a necessary step, but since I happen to already have some framing tape, I'm going to just use it to give this frame a little bit of a cleaner look. I usually use this to back my paper paintings when I'm framing them, but uh, it's going to add just a little bit of sharpness to this back here. Use an exacto knife to trim that. There we go. All right, all set, and I'm ready to put the wire on. Before I do that, I want to flip my painting over one more time. It's exceptionally important to make sure you know where the top of your painting is when you're putting the wire on. It is, let me tell you, a real bummer to get your wire all in your painting and get it set and only to flip it over to realize that you have wired it upside down. So make sure the top of the painting is at the top. Next, you're going to want to put your wire a third of the way down your frame. All artwork should be hung approximately a third of the way down. For any type of hanging artwork, one third is the general rule of thumb. All right, I'm gonna get my ruler and I'm gonna measure the length of this frame from the outside to see what a third of it will be. Uh, this is an 18 inch ruler. You can see it's just over 18, maybe 18 and a half inches. 
Um, so I am going to go with six inches would be a third of 18. I'm going to add on another eighth of an inch to account for this little additional space I have down here. So about six and an eighth of an inch is where I'm gonna measure down the edge of my frame. Put a pencil mark right there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Six and a quarter. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my awl and try to find the approximate center of the frame at that six and a quarter mark, and I'm gonna make a hole. Same thing on the other side. And that is where I'm going to put in my screw eyes. Two of those out. It's important when you're putting these screws in that you check the depth of any screw you're putting in here and make sure that it will not come through the other side of your frame. And this has an inset in here, so really I need to be checking the inside of this frame and making sure my screw doesn't go through. Um, and it looks like we're safe here, but I am going to just check again as I get it tightened down to make sure that I'm not poking that through the front of my frame. I'll just get those twisted in with my fingers and then I'm going to use my awl to tighten them down a little bit more. Like I said, as I'm getting down there, I'm going to put my hand on the other side here. So if I start to feel any pressure, I'll know but that screw is getting too close and I need to stop tightening it. But that one went in just fine. There. All right. So they're both good. And you can see I've got them just, um, let's see here. They're not wedged down into the wood as far as they can go, but all of the screwing part is covered and is down inside the wood so just the round part is is sticking out. Next I can get my wire. Okay there is a specific way to do this so it is firm and you do not want to have to tie any knots in your wire. So I'll start out, I start right to left I'll put it through that, that screw eye and pull it through. And then I'll pull it through my other screw eye. And I want to make sure I've got a couple of inches. Let's see, I have a ruler here, I can tell you. I'm going to use get four to five inches on the other side of that screw eye. And then, let's see if I can zoom in to show you how I'm wrapping this around. I go under the wire and around the screw eye and back through that way. I'm going to show you one more time. The wire goes through the screw eye about five inches, four or five inches. Make sure you've got enough to hold on to. I'm going to wrap it under the wire and around, and then just back through the screw eye. And, oh, come on, you little fella. Back through the screw eye and pull it so it's, it's tight. See that? Now that that's in there, I'm going, you don't need to tie a knot. That's all you need to do to hold it on. And what else is going to hold it together is we're going to wrap this wire 
around our, our longer wire um, and that is going to hold it firm and give also give the wire some room to stretch and as it pulls while it's hanging um, on its own weight on a hook this wire will tighten up even more and be an even firmer hold on that screw eye so first I'm going to I like to start by going under and I'm just gonna wrap this around and using my fingers, I want to try to wrap this wire as tightly around itself as I can, neat and tidy right up against itself. And it just takes some practice to try to do that. Uh, the more you do it, the, the easier and quicker you'll be able to do it. But do you see how tight that is right up next to it? I'm just going to continue wrapping that until I run out of wire, really. Okay, so I've got about an inch or so wrapped and that's really what you want is about a good inch that's gonna give your painting a nice hold. And you can either continue uh, to finish off the little end you have or you can snip it off with your wire cutters if you have a lot of, a lot of extra, but I'm just gonna finish wrapping that around. Okay, perfect. Get that so it's back in the center. You can see the whole thing. Okay, so next, I'll back my camera up a little bit. I'm going to trim the wire and do the other side. Oh, my wire fell. Okay. So this is still attached, but it's through this other, other screw eye. I'm gonna take my wire clippers. I'm gonna pull this so it's snug. And then I'm going to cut, cut this so there's about five inches, just like I had on the other side. Okay, set that away. Now, same thing. You don't need to pull it as hard as you can, but you want to make sure it's fairly firm there and has a good hold because the wire will stretch when you put it on a nail. And if you start out really loose, you're going to have, and you have your wire hanging up really high, um, it's going to stretch even further and you're going to find that it's floppy when it's hanging on the wall or your nail almost, you can see your nail sometimes if your wire is too loose. So you want to start out fairly firm. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the other side. I'm going to pull it under the wire, around, and back through. And then I'm just going to do the same thing and wrap it around itself and try to keep that as nice and tightly wrapped as I can. All right, I'm going to clip the end of that off. There. All right. We are professionally, somewhat professionally framed and ready to hang on a wall. Okay, next, our second painting that we are going to look at is Sarah Mahalik's uh, collage she has on canvas. So let me clear this guy out of the way and we will get Sarah's up and going. Okay, Sarah Mahalik's collage piece, also on canvas, about seven eighths of an inch thick. We ordered a natural wood floating frame, which is going to give it a little bit more of a modern look. I think this is a 16 by 20 inch floating frame. We also purchased it, I think, online at Utrecht Art Supplies. And so this is a natural wood coated it's got a nice clear coat on it but it's natural wood floating frame 16 by 20 inches I believe it was 
about $29 to purchase this online. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these corners off and get the painting in there. Excuse me, the collage, get the collage in there. I just wanted to point out while I'm taking the uh, corners off here that sometimes these companies staple their corners to their frames. You can see I've got the staple sticking out the back. I'm just gonna take a, uh, a flathead screwdriver or if you have a pair of pliers, uh, and gently, gently pry that out without damaging the frame. Ooh. All right, getting those corners off was kind of a chore. I'm gonna flip the frame back around to the front side. Now this is, like I said, this is a floating frame, so the um, canvas is going to sit down in it and not, um, not actually be covered by the frame. So I want to put it down in there first, just fit it and make sure it fits okay. When you're measuring uh, to order a floating frame, you want to measure, you have a 16 by 20 inch canvas, so you look for a 16 by 20 inch frame. And you also want to check the depth of that floating frame. Um, this canvas is about seven eighths of an inch and this floating frame is a little bit deeper than that. It's probably about an inch. So I knew when I ordered it that this was going to sit inside of it a little bit, which is fine. Um, but if you have a personal preference or if you want your artwork to sit just above, above your floating frame, outside of it slightly, or if you want it to really be more flush with the frame, um, you need to take that into account when you're measuring the depth of the frame when you order it. So my canvas, or Sarah's canvas rather, sits in here, sits inside of it slightly, and it fits just nicely. So I'm going to turn it over. All right, so we have Sarah's collage flipped back over. Uh, so this is the back of the frame and we're ready to screw it on to her artwork. You can see that there are four pre-drilled holes here to put screws in, and that is how we will attach it to the artwork. Unfortunately, this little fella did not come with any screws, so we have to provide our own and are now on hold for a little bit until we can find four nice screws uh, that are the correct size for this. So find screws that fit. Do not resort to getting something that almost works right just because it's what you have on hand right now. If you do not have the proper screw, go to the hardware store, buy four screws, and then finish your project. Do not substitute with a screw that almost fits or a nail or anything else. Just go find the right screws. So we will do that and then we'll get back to this framing. Okay, I have returned from the hardware store with four wood screws. So I am ready to finish framing this collage. Just double check and make sure my screws fit properly. I can hold it up on the side here and see that if I put my screw in the hole, it will go down nicely into um, <clears throat> the wooden frame, but not all the way through it. So that is a good size screw to use. Now I want to make sure my frame is lined up and my painting is centered as best as I can. And I can also look through these holes to make sure they are lined up with the canvas and not going to the side of it. Okay. Take my awl. punch a hole where I want my first screw to go. This is a flat Phillips head, so I'll put the right head on my screwdriver. I'll start. I'm going to hold this with my hand underneath it to kind of hold the canvas in place since it sets down into the frame. 
and then tighten that down so it's just firm. It's not as tight as I could do it, but it's firm and it's gonna hold the, the canvas in place. Next, I wanna line up the bottom of my canvas. Flip this over to make sure that I am still centered. And I am. Once I hold that in place, I'll uh, mark it again with my awl. And there, that is firm, but not forced. Check this again. All right, now it's time to do the sides. Now I see the sides are bowed, have a tendency to bow out a little bit. So I wanna put a little bit of pressure in those to make sure that they are at a 90 degree angle and above fully covering the canvas so I get things screwed in in the right spot. So again, just applying a little bit of pressure here. Not much, because I don't want to uh, push anything to the point where it could crack, but just kind of keeping it taut with my hand while I screw this in. Looks good. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the last side, and we'll be ready to put the wire in. All right, we are all set. We have the canvas mounted on the frame and now it's time to put the wire in. I'm going to flip it over one more time and make sure that the top is facing the top when I put the wire on. And I can see Sarah has signed the back of this canvas so that's one more indication that it is right side up because her signature is facing the right direction. Now again, I'm going to take my ruler and measure the full length of this frame. And it is about 21 inches long, so I'm going to take a third of that and measure about 7 inches down with my pencil. Put a mark at 7 inches. And a mark on the other side at seven inches, a third of a way down the frame. I'm going to take my awl and go to the center. This is a little bit harder wood. Take my small screw eyes. All right, I'll get these started with my hand and then I'll finish screwing them in with my awl. they stay straight up and down otherwise they break I discovered a problem when I was screwing my putting my screw eyes in to uh, hang my wire this is a really hard wood that this frame is made out of and my screw eye broke in the in the wood when I was screwing it in which means that my screw eye is just too soft to use for this wood. So I switched to these D-ring hooks, which you frequently see on, on framing also. So I'm going to use those with a screw and it's no problem with my frame. I just moved my screw hole over, oops. So with my frame, I just moved my screw hole over just a little bit and put this D hook there with a screw instead. And that went into the wood 
a lot easier. I do want to make sure that that is screwed down firmly because I don't want this D hook to slide up and down when the wire is on it. So I'll just give that one more good turn. And I will go ahead and put the D ring on the other side. All right, that is in there nice and snug and it's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to take my wire again. Go through the D hook. leave about five inches or so and just like I did with the previous painting zoom in so you can see here through I'm gonna go back around and under my wire then I'm gonna come back around and go through the D hook and back through one more time and I'll pull it tight. There we go. And I will take this extra that I have and wrap it around itself. And I'm going to try to keep that nice and tidy and stack the wire right next to each other. That way when there's any pressure on it, when it's hung up, it just gets even tighter and has a better hold on the D-hook. Okay. There we go. That side's done now. I can do the next, next one. Pull it tight. Taut. And then I'm going to cut off the extra. And the same here. I'll just wrap it under and go back through the hook and wrap it around itself and finish it up. Okay. This guy is ready to go. So let's get them up on the wall. Okay, here we have both of our pieces framed and up on the wall in the gallery ready to display. I hope this tutorial has been a little helpful for you to understand what tools and processes you might be able to use to frame some of your own work and make it presentable in a gallery setting. Um, I think the tools we used probably ranged from a total of 20 to $40 in value, depending on how many of them you decide that you would like to use in your process. And they can be used over and over again as you frame multiple paintings. The frames here were each under $30 and we did spend an additional couple dollars on other materials, screws um, and frame clips and wire to finish the framing process. But all in all, um, a fairly low cost way to kick off your framing and continue framing more of your work as you move forward. So thank you for watching and look for my next video, which will give you some insights into framing works on paper under glass. Thank you.